Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your host, Bill Miller. Today we are continuing with our vlog series on Aquaman. And we have chosen Aquaman issue number three. So turn the volume up just a hair, turn the lights down a smidgen, sit back, relax, and let your imagination paint the pictures as we read Aquaman issue number three. So on the cover, we have a ship full of archers that are shooting arrows at a school of fish. And Aquaman is riding a dolphin. And it says, Aquaman featuring the king of the seven seas and his young ally, Aqualad. A fantastic three-part thriller featuring Aquaman in ancient times and its enemy in the present, the Aquaman from Atlantis. And the fellows from the ship says, he commands the fish to snare our spears and arrows before they can reach him. It must be true then, he is the Greek god of the sea, Poseidon. So I guess they're firing arrows at Aquaman. And the fish are catching these arrows mid-flight in their mouths prior to them reaching Aquaman. Fantastic. Aquaman and Aqualad. The maritime world seems, still seems the familiar figure. Whoa. Let's try that again. The maritime world still sees the familiar figure of Aquaman riding the waves. But little does anyone suspect that the real king of the seven seas is battling for his very life in the waters of a world that existed almost 2,500 years ago. How can this be? You'll learn the astonishing answer when the truth is revealed about the Aquaman from Atlantis. Aquaman is dead. From now on, I'll be the king, or I'll be the sea king. And we see Aquaman in the water with a seemingly lifeless body and a stranger swimming away from him, veering back. One day as Aquaman and his young ally Aqualad patrol the waves on their sea steeds. Look, Aquaman, that lanternfish is blinking in SOS. That can only mean trouble somewhere. Wonder where it is. The telepathically relayed answer stuns the famed sea sleuth. Shades of Davy Jones, the, the SOS was sent to me from, from Atlantis. The ancestral home of my mother. We must go there at once, Aqualad. Before long, just outside the dome-enclosed undersea city. Thank Neptune you have come, Aquaman. It was I, Pomoxus, who sent for you. What's the trouble, Pomoxus? Is some danger threatening Atlantis? There is your answer, the latest in a long series of mysterious explosions. Vroom! They are coming closer and closer to Atlantis. If one of those explosions occurred right under our city, our entire civilization would be wiped out. You are familiar with the outside world, Aquaman. Perhaps you can determine the nature of the explosions and find out how to stop them. I'll sure do my best, pa pa <laughs> I can't get that name. I'll sure do my best, Pamuxus. Good. I will lead you to the, to the source of the explosions. As for you, Aquaman, please tell the Atlantean leader that Aquaman has arrived and will try to help us. Yes, Aqualad, and then follow us toward that underground mountain belt. Shortly, as the Sea King and the Atlantean approach the danger area, there seems to be a tremendous vibration in the water and those strange fumes emerging like giant smoke rings. Suddenly, Blam! A huge explosion rocking the two back. At the same time, great guppies! That blinding fish, has it killed them? Aquaman, Pomoxus, are you okay? Where are you? I'm all right, Aqualad, but, but I'm afraid poor Pomoxus was killed in the blast and buried beneath tons of debris. Oh no, we'd better tell the Atlanteans what happened. Now we must leave. Our services may be needed in the outside world. Farewell, Aquaman and Aqualad. Oh, wrong one. Soon inside the undersea city. We are saddened by the tragic news you bring of Pomoxus, Aquaman, but 
What have you learned about the strange explosions? They seem to have been volcanic eruptions. From what I could observe, the worst is over. There should be no more of them. Now we must leave. Our services may be needed in the outside world. Farewell, Aquaman and Aqualad, and thank you for answering our summons so promptly. No sooner do the maritime marvels surface than... Suffering seashells. Look, Aquaman, that cargo ship is sinking. You saved the crew, Aqualad, while I salvaged the cargo. Presently, as Aqualad carries out his rescue mission, boom! There goes the ship. I wonder what's keeping Aquaman. He should have had the cargo out some time ago. When we see the ship after a violent explosion descending down into the, the water. Just then, Aquaman, where's the cargo? I'm afraid it's lost, Aqualad. The ship blew up before I could empty the holds. But why didn't you summon some fish to help you, as you always do? Stop telling me what to do, Aqualad. Just get those crew members to shore. And then Aqualad's thinking, Golly, Aquaman has never spoken to me like that before. Could, could that undersea blast have affected his mind? If only you could read his thoughts, Aqualad, for at this very moment... The little fool doesn't suspect a thing. He doesn't know that for years I plotted to pose as Aquaman so I could maraud on the surface. My plan was to hide the loot, then return to Atlantis in my own identity as Pomoxis. But after I had designed the Aquaman disguise, bah, it would never work. As long as Aquaman was alive, I'd run the risk of catching me. He'd run, I'd run the rich, the risk of his catching me in the act. It was those undersea explosions that gave me the break I needed. For when Aquaman and I were caught up in the blast, a strange hole has opened up in the water, right near Aquaman, and, and he hasn't noticed it. Quickly, I seized the opportunity. In you go! What? Next moment, the strange hole is closing and swallowing up Aquaman. For good, I hope. I then darted to a nearby rock where, now to put on my Aquaman disguise, and entered and emerges the Sea King himself. Ha ha ha. I'll tell you, Aqualad, that poor Pomoxis was killed. And since everyone trusts Aquaman, it'll be easy for me to carry on my marauding over the seven seas. But first, I must perfect my mastery over the fish, so I can telepathize commands to them. Is this the end of Aquaman, and the beginning of the career of an evil Sea King? For the answer to that question, we must turn back the clock and follow Aquaman as he goes hurtling through the strange waterhole. I, I seem to be falling through space, ugh, blacking out. And when the hapless sea sleuth regains consciousness, I floated to the surface, but, but the seascape seems different somehow. And where is Aqualad? Hmm, there's a strange ship approaching. Why, it's a galley warship, the type used by the Persians almost 2,500 years ago. Great waves! Somehow I've been catapulted into ancient times. An ironic end now threatens the lives of the daring duo of the deep. Separated by almost 2,500 years, each prepares in his own way for the double doom. Chapter 2 <sighs> Without water, I'll die in an hour. And that's Aqualad with the sun beating down on him, tied up on a rocky beach. And in the adjoining panel, we see Aquaman. The, the quake is causing the mountain to topple over on me. The Sea King stares unbelievingly at the ancient Persian warship when, Behold, a Greek warrior in the water! Destroy him! As a shower of spears hurtles toward him, I'd better get to that island in a hurry. Eh? The warrior seemed to vanish. Upon reaching the island, however, oh no, I've run smack into an army of Greek soldiers. But to Aquaman's relief, have no fear of us. We saw the Persians trying to kill you. Soon they will kill our people too and destroy our beautiful cities. In that case, why are you hiding out on this island? Alas, according to the original defense plan, we were supposed to sail across to the mainland to join the main Greek army under Multiades. But our ships were sunk by an earthquake. Hmm. Maybe I can figure out another way of getting your troops to the mainland. Swiftly, Aquaman dispatches a telepathic message, and soon, 
those whales emerging from below the sea? What has brought them here? You'll soon find out. Get your troops ready to march and your chariots ready to roll. Before long, an amazing scene takes place. What? Why, the whales are transporting them to the mainland. Exactly. And we see the whales with chariots and horses and troops standing atop them, slowly moving away from the island. And after the dramatic crossing, Great Zeus, is it possible that you commanded those whales? Who, who are you? But before Aquaman can reply, Selenus. Look, an entire Persian fleet approaches our shores. What? It is true. They have come before we could join forces with Multiades. With, with Multiades. Miltiades. There we go. With Miltiades. Fighting alone, we are doomed. Hmm. That etching of Poseidon on the shield. Poseidon is the Greek name for Neptune, god of the sea. And that gives me an idea. Shortly aboard the Persian flagship, halt! Turn your galley ships around and depart, lest you arouse the vengeance of Poseidon. A, a strange figure mounted upon a dolphin and representing himself to be the Greek god of the sea? It is a trick. Are we ignorant fools to be taken in by the Greek myths? Fire upon him. What? Great Hermes, observe. The stranger has summoned fish, which are snaring our spears and arrows before they can reach him. And this is the piece of action that was detailed on the cover of the issue. And he has commanded those octopi to catapult swordfish at us. He, he is a god indeed. Y yes, but he is only a god of the sea. Quickly, we must reach the land where we will be beyond his powers. But before the invading ships can reach the shore, we are doomed. The Greek god has commanded whales to attack us. Give the retreat signal. And the whales are ramming into the galleys. And shortly, as the once powerful Persian fleet scatters in disorder, you are Poseidon, return to save your people. Aquaman's thinking, what's the use? You'd never believe me if I denied it. But what now? Am, am I doomed to spend the rest of my life as masquerading as a Greek god? Meanwhile, almost 2,500 years in the future, another masquerade is being enacted. Aqualad doesn't suspect my real identity, but how can I start marauding with that little pest constantly at my side unless... Hmm, unless... Er, Aqualad, from now on, we'll swim our patrols separately, and that way we can uh, cover more ground. But, but Aquaman, we're a team. It, it wouldn't feel right not being with you. Don't argue with me. I'll decide what's right. Hmm. Afterward, as the disguised Pomoxis approaches a cargo ship, now to continue my career as the marauding king of the sea. Telepathic commands crackle under the surface and soon, ha ha, he saw Fisher cutting nice big holes out of the ship's hull. Minutes later, that's it, Octopi. Tie up those cargo cases and haul them out. Finally, the crew is safe in lifeboats. The crew is safe in lifeboats, and none the wiser. Get a good hold on the loot, my finny subjects, and follow me. So he has commanded the creatures of the sea to help him haul the cargo to an undisclosed area. Presently, in a remote cave on the sea floor. Ha ha, I'll trade this loot for gold and silver and become the richest man in Atlantis. I can tell them I found the precious metals and no one will ever be the wiser. But just then, just as I figured, you're not really Aquaman. Aqualad, but, but how did you suspect? When you rode off on the wrong porpoise, Aquaman's favorite sea mount is Porpy here, the one you didn't take. But where is Aquaman? Ha! You'll never see him again, Aqualad. Oh, no? We'll see about that. Maybe the Atlanteans can force you to tell me. But before Aqualad can get very far... Jumping jellyfish! What's the idea? Let me out of this fish net. Never fear. I'll let you out at the right time. But where are you taking me? On an abandoned lighthouse island, Aqualad learns the grim answer. Ha ha! No ship ever passes this way, and after you've been here for an hour, I won't have to worry about you. Like all Atlanteans, Aqualad cannot survive out of the water for more than a single hour. High above, the sun blazes brightly in a cloudless sky as if 
if only Aquaman were around to save me, but I, I know he must be dead, and so will I be before long. But in the dim past, the Sea King's hopes surged suddenly when great waves, those giant smoke rings rising to the surface, that they're like the fumes I saw just prior to the vibrations that caused that time warp. Deep dives the maritime marvel until I, I was right. Another quake has started. And the terrific vibrations, they occurred seconds before the warp opened up. It, it must open up again. It must. But at that instant, oh no. This time the vibrations are causing that undersea mountain to topple over on me. Is this the ironic end of the daring duo of the deep? Each meeting is doomed almost 2,500 years apart. And we see an avalanche of undersea rocks falling toward Aquaman. And now for the final showdown between the rival kings of the sea, as each side summons its own denizens of the deep for the Battle of the Fish Armies, Chapter 3. It's no use. Our swordfish and Pomoxis' swordfish are battling to a draw. We see Pomoxis and his legion of swordfish parrying with Aquaman and Aqualad and their legion of swordfish. Safe from interference by Aquaman or Aqualad, the villainous Atlantean Pomoxis roams the seas in quest of booty. B-O-O-T-Y. That cargo ship's holds are bursting with gold bullion, but not for long. Minutes later, Sir, we've run aground on a reef. But, but there are no reefs charted in these waters. Abandoned ship. As the hapless seamen head for shore in lifeboats, ha ha, little do they know that the reefs were actually camouflaged whales, acting under my orders. Now I can loot the ship at my leisure. Meanwhile, a far rumor scene takes place on a remote lighthouse island. Only minutes left before the hour's up. There's no hope for me. Aqualad, of course, is still tied up on the island. But at that very instant, Aquaman, where did you... Save your breath, Aqualad, until I get you into the water. And shortly, as Aqualad's strength revives in the life-giving waters, Whew, that was close, but now tell me, where have you been? Believe it or not, Aqualad, in ancient Greece, Homoxus pushed me through a time warp. On a hunch, I returned to the warp area during an earthquake, but... And then it takes us back to the avalanche. No chance to get out of the way of that toppling mountain. Then suddenly, there it is, the warp has opened up again, but can I reach it in time? I put on a superhuman burst of speed and made it. He burst, zips through the water into that undersea vortex. But how'd you find me on this remote lighthouse island? You can thank Porpy here for bringing me, Aqualad. He remembered the spot. Good old Porpy. Now let's get after Pomoxis. I can show you exactly where his cave is. Good work, chum. Lead the way. But shortly after, that signal fish, it's blinking a warning of approaching swimmers, as I ordered it to, but who could be coming here? A moment later, Come out of there, Promoxus. Your marauding days are over. Aquaman. Alive and Aqualad, too. But you'll never stop me. Never. Watch it, Aquaman. He's got a spear gun. Instantly, a telepathic order goes out. This group of swordfish should take care of that renegade. But, haha, two can play that same game. Aquaman forgets. I can communicate with fish, too. And soon... As two squads of opposing fish cross swords, I'm afraid they're too evenly matched, Aquaman. They're fencing to a draw. Don't worry. Maybe I can surprise Pomoxis by sending these octopi on a charge right around the right flank. But again, a swift counterattack is mounted. Oh no! Now Pomoxis' octopi are wrestling ours to a standstill. On and on rages the strange undersea battle while... I'm depending on these giant seahorses to storm Pomoxus's cave. But, look, Aquaman, Pomoxus stopped the charge of seahorses by converting those eels into finny lassos. And <laughs> all the seahorses have been lassoed by these eels. And when the sea king tries, still another tactic. Ha ha, sick him! He set those giant dogfish after our catfish. 
That's fantastic. It's a complete stalemate, Aquaman. If only there was some way of getting a Pomoxis past his finny protectors. Hmm, there may be one way. Be careful, Aquaman. Don't forget he's got a spear gun. No time to explain now, Aqualad. Stand by and wish me luck. Tense minutes later, as the alert Atlantean hears a sudden sound. So, Aquaman thinks he can surprise me from the rear, while well, I'll show him. Next moment. Go ahead, torpedo fish. There is your target. With unerring accuracy, the torpedo fish hurtle forward on their grim mission until a direct hit knocked him out. Then, it's clingfish bringing the helpless prisoner. Ha ha! This is one hole you'll never get out of alive, Aquaman. But to the Atlantean's amazement, great seashells, it, it was only my Aquaman disguise with a giant turtle inside. Right, Pomoxis. And since you enjoy playing King of the Sea so much, I've come to crown you. And Aquaman snuck up behind him and grabbed him. But must get back the spear gun. Yay! Good work, pal. And the turtle snatched the spear gun from Pomoxis. And shortly, we'll take Pomoxis back to Atlantis, and later we'll return this loot to the rightful owners. Okay. Aquaman now has the spear gun, and Aquaman has the prisoner. In the undersea city, a while later, Pomoxis will pay the full penalty for his wrongdoing, Aquaman, but tell us, did you discover the source of those explosions? Yes, they're simply volcanic eruptions, but I er, discovered they've been taking place in practically the same spot for 2,500 years. So I don't think there's any danger of their getting any closer to Atlantis. That is a relief indeed. Thank you for your great help, Aqualad and Aqualad. Come on, Aqualad, let's get back to Pomoxis to Pomoxis' outside cave and return that loot. Sure thing, Poseidon. Or, I mean, Aquaman. The end. And that is the end of Aquaman issue number three. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you're alerted as soon as I release new recordings. Thumbs up and comments are always appreciated. And remember, we're taking over the world one comic book at a time.